Hello, everyone. Uh, I received some comments that uh, for the uh, some of you some of you think uh, uh, how to calculate the swap curve swap rate curve is quite challenging. So this video is uh, used to explain more details how we can use Excel the solver to solve this kind of problem. Because uh, I'm at home, so I. Uh, didn't uh, use the video. I will share share my screen so you can know my screen. Uh, you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm gonna show the slides first. So first, uh, uh, the Swap the swap rate curve is from the page eleven of the slide, and I use one example. Um, how like basically we know the spot rate curve, and then we try to get the swap rate curve from the spot rate. And uh, the principle is that the swap rate curve, um, the rate here we label as SFR, uh, is a rate that. Uh, uh, basically, it's more like a coupon rate, and then uh, the coup if we calculate the cash flow based on the coupon rate, and then we discount by the spot curve, we can find out the price of the uh, this uh, uh, this coupon bond. Right? If we treat the, the swap curve as a coupon payment, uh, a coupon bond, then this the price of this coupon bond should be one. If we assume the future value, uh, the face value is one. Of course, if the face value is uh, one hundred, then the price of this bond should be one hundred. If the face value is uh, one thousand, then the price should be one thousand. Here, just uh, for simplicity, we put it uh, put it as one. And see, basically, uh, if it's a one year uh swap rate the one year spot swap rate we treat it as a one year coupon bond and we receive this rate times one is itself that's the cash uh, inflow at the end of the first year plus the face value and we discount it by the first year spot rate um then we can get the price of this bond because it should be a sell at a par so the price is one and for two year for the two years swap rate curve, we treat the uh, rate as the coupon rate. And then we should receive the coupon payment at the end of the first year. And we discount it by the first year spot, uh, spot rate. And then I, the second coupon arrives at the end of the second year. We discount it twice plus the face value, which is $1 equals to one. Then we can solve the, this coupon rate, which is the swap rate. And for year three, it's the same thing. So we assume that uh, um, we we assume this rate, a three year uh, swap rate, is a coupon rate, and this is a par bond. Then we can solve the uh, solve the price. It should be equals to one because we assume again the face value is one. Then we can find out the swap rate. So. Uh, next, I would like to uh, show you how to use uh, how to use Excel the solver to solve this. Uh, so now we switch to this uh, uh, Excel, and the uh, spot rate is three percent for the first year, four percent for the second year, five percent for the third year. And we first assume the swap rate for the first year is one percent. Then on uh, the first year, at the end of the first year, for this one year bond, you will receive, um, if we assume face value is $1, we will receive 1% times 1, which is 0 .001, 0 0.01 plus $1, that's the total cash flow you receive. And then we need to find out the present value to find out the price of this bond. So we use the, the cash flow and we discount it by the spot rate. And because uh, it happened at the end of the first year, so the um, power is one. So 
we found out that the present value is not a one, right? Right now it's a discount bound, it's a, not a power bound. Then we can change the swap rate um, to make the present value equals to zero. Uh, sorry, equals to one. So our objective is this number is the price of this one year bond. And we try to make it uh, equals to one. And by changing the swap rate curve, then we find out the swap rate is 3%. For the second year, we assume it's 1%. You can put any number. It doesn't really matter because we will change the number here. And then the first year, at the end of the first year, you will receive this 1% times $1 fixed value. And at the end of the second year, you will receive the second coupon payment is 1% times $1 plus $1, which is the fixed value. And we can discount it. So we find out the present value of the first cash flow. We discount by the spot rate, remember? And then, so then we find out the price of the two-year bond should be sum of the uh, present value of all future cash flows. And then, of course, it's not equal to one, then we need to make change the swap rate to make the uh, this two-year bond as a power bond. So we will change this second year swap rate. We find out the second year swap rate is 3.98%. This is, sorry, uh, here is a mistake. This is two years of cash flow. And for three year to operate, we need this three year to of cash flow. And uh, everything is similar. So uh, the first, uh, again, we assume it's 1%, the, the coupon rate. The first uh, coupon you receive is 1% times one. Second, the uh, cash flow is what is 1% times 1 again. And the last one is this 1% times 1 plus 1 because we have this face value and we discount uh, all the cash flow by the spot rate. And we sum it up. That, that is uh, that is the um, cash uh, the price of this three year bond and uh, we need a decimal decimals to show whether it is a, a true one here true power bond again it's a part it's a discount bond it's not a power bond then so we will change this. Uh, we will make the price of this three-year bond as a power bond by changing the swap rate. Then we can solve this swap rate curve. So it's possible that we have more years, for example, four years. And the four-year swap rate is 6%. Then it's the same thing. We assume that the swap rate curve is 1%. And we can copy this. Down here, so this is a four year stop rate. And the cash flow is 0 0.01 at the end of the, all the years from year one to year three. And for year four, uh, you will receive this 1% times one plus one, so it's 1.01. .01. Of course, this uh, cash flow will change accordingly when we change the swap rate curve. So then we discount them, uh, discount the cash by the uh, spot rate. And then sum it up. That is the present value of this bond. And we want to make it as power bond. That's the definition of swap. And we use against the solver. 
and uh, the objective uh, the objective cell is the price of this bond. We try to make it as one, which is cells at par, by changing the swap rate. Then we can find out the swap swap rate curve. Um, let me know if you're still confused after after watching this video. Thank you. Bye.